Let's come to a comfortable seated position. So you're welcome again to sit on a block or on a bolster, whatever um, way that you want to sit so that your hips are slightly elevated. It creates a lengthening in the spine and allows us to sit comfortably. So coming into this posture here, Sukhasana, our, our cross-legged seated pose, soften the shoulders, close the eyes for a moment. Just take a few breaths to arrive onto your mat. Allow for a deep inhale. followed by a slow, gentle exhale. Continue to allow the breath to move rhythmically through the body. Simply watching that oceanic movement of the breath, like waves in the ocean. The inhale is long and steady, like you're sipping up the air. And the exhale is calm and quiet, simply releasing. As we continue to bring awareness to breath, let that awareness move a little deeper into the body here. Let's work a little bit on the spine. So bring awareness to the place where your body meets your cushion or the floor, the sit bones, the tip of your tailbone. Notice how grounded you feel through this part of your body your glutes in contact with your cushion or floor. The weight of your body pressing down onto the earth as the earth responds by pressing up through the force of gravity with equal amount of resistance. Move your breath into this pelvic floor part of your spine. Perhaps engage here a little bit into your mula bandha, your pelvic floor, your root. Contract there through that lock by simply drawing the sit bones in towards each other and then the tailbone and the pubic bone that are sit in the back in front of the body in towards each other as well. So you're hugging in through the pelvic floor. Hold there as you continue to breathe. Try not to release the hold, even with the exhale, continue to hold. Hold the contraction, hold your banda. And then with the next exhale, they start to move the awareness so slightly higher up the spine, right around the area of the sacrum. It's right where that a few inches below the belly button, but deep into the body. Bring awareness there. You might still want to hold your mula bandha, still engaging there, releasing as you feel ready. And then again, going back into the contraction. But it's a softness in the rest of the body that brings awareness to this part. And then as we exhale, letting the awareness now move a little bit higher up the spine to the area right around the solar plexus, a little bit underneath, just a few inches above the belly button, but deep into the spine. 
Bring awareness there. Notice how all the muscles around this area feel. You can still hold the contraction of the Mula Bandha if you're working on that still, that's great. If you feel like you wanted to release that, it's good too. Feel here at the solar plexus, your Uriyana Bandha. This is where you breathe in, almost like you're taking a false breath. Drawing the prana into the body, kind of sipping it up, and then holding there in tightness. It's right in the solar plexus, right a little bit below. And there's a contraction that happens there. And you can continue to breathe even though that's contracted, you can continue to allow the breath to move effortlessly through the body. So now perhaps you have either just the Mula Bandha or just the Uriyana Bandha, or perhaps you have both blocks engaged. With the next exhale, allow the the awareness to move slightly higher to the center of your chest cavity, the area where your heart resides. Feel as the breath expands your entire torso with each inhale and feel a contraction of the breath with each exhale and of hugging your lungs as they expand and as they contract with each breath you take. Again, you may hold one or both of the bandhas already mentioned. If you're feeling tired, you can release one or both. As we exhale, let's let the awareness draw up towards the throat, to our throat lock here. And we'll begin to roll the chin down towards the chest, very gently, but with purpose, with intention. Take a swallow and then continue to press the chin down towards the chest. Now here we'll retain the breath. So full exhale breath you may contract through both your root and your solar plexus locks and then also lock through your throat. Retain breath. Soften through shoulders. Feeling engagement in the entire body. Relax through the arms. And slowly exhale. Inhale again, lift the chin. Blink the eyes open, awareness back into our space. Let's roll the shoulders back, starting to move into the body. Great job using those locks, those bandhas are really good for us, especially when we start our yang practice here in a few moments. Let's draw breath in, inhale, draw the arms up. Create extension through both sides of your body. So feel free to add a little bit of movement here. If you want to press the rib cage to the side, if you want to let your head come down, you want to feel openness to the chest, maybe gaze up. You feel like rounding into your spine, gazing down. However you want to move your spine here, feel free to move in whatever way feels good. Just see if you can keep those arms lengthening and the shoulders pulled back. And then exhale, slowly bring hands to prayer. So let's start with a little bit of gratitude here. So thanking ourselves for showing up onto our mats today. Thanking our bodies for supporting us and for doing all the amazing things that our bodies do every day without us even needing to know how or why. They just do it. Take a moment to thank whatever circumstances in your life are going on. Even if it's not, if they're not the best circumstances ever, the fact that you're experiencing them is a blessing in on its own. Difficulties lead us to a higher awareness of ourselves and of our situations and how to deal with uncomfortable situations. So gratitude for them is always going to be a good thing. 
Maybe thank your uh, family, be grateful for your family, your friends, the people that love you. Just find whatever you need to be grateful for. The warm day we had today, the beautiful moon last night. Fill your heart with gratitude and you don't have to sit and name all of them. Just let it come in, almost like colors coming into your mind. And then exhale, let's release the hands down to the floor. We're going to go for some side bending. We're taking right hand to the floor, left arm up towards the ceiling. As you extend into that left arm, feel your left hip pressing down into your cushion and take it up and over. You're going to decide here how far you want to go. If you want to go a little deeper, you can walk those right fingertips away, lengthen all the way, feel your stretch, rotate left shoulder back, maybe gazing up towards sky. Reach through the fingertips. That left elbow is a little bit soft, so you don't have to bend it. You don't have to keep it perfectly straight. It can be somewhere in the middle. And then exhale, slowly coming back through the center. And we'll just go ahead and do right the into the other side. So right arm extends up. Feel your right hip this time pressing down into the floor. And then go ahead and take it over to the left. So again, you get to decide here. Do you want to walk those fingertips away and go a little deeper? Do you want to stay more supported by your left arm? Once you found yourself in position, roll that right shoulder back as you gaze up towards the sky, reach to the fingertips. Remember a slight softness in that right elbow is fine. Don't over push, we're just warming up here, taking our time to get settled. Press the right hip away, feel deep, stretch the right side body, and exhale, coming back through to center. Once more, a little shoulder roll here, and shoulder roll forward. And let's go ahead and come into our tabletop position. So we're gonna to start today our practice in our tabletop position. I'm hoping it looks kind of dark, but I think it's okay. Oh, there, it lit up, ha <laughs> ha, okay, good. <laughs> now it's getting dark again. All right, we'll see how it works. Bring your hands onto hands and knees, uh, or come onto hands and knees. Press into the hands, fan out the shoulders, contact the shoulders, tuck the toes under. Inhale, lift just the knees off the floor. So we're starting here with some core strengthening, so we're working into our yang practice. Make sure you're pushing the floor away. Engage into all of your 10 fingers of your hand. Thumbs, pinkies, every finger included. Allow your shoulders to protract away and the knees stay hovering off the mat just a little bit. Create a little tuck under of the tailbone as you protract your shoulders. Toes are on the floor. Let's hold here for five. Belly strong and tight engage, four. Working on lengthening that spine, working on that strength, three. Gaze down towards your mat, two. And exhale, press it up, come to your downward facing. If you've been kind of really active throughout the day or perhaps you've been passive throughout the day, coming into downward facing can seem like a oh, daunting task. So take your time to pedal out your legs, bend and strengthen your knees, sway your hips. Move around as much as you need to. Maybe press the weight forward, press the weight back. Let the head totally hang and relax. And just find yourself here. Keep drawing in through the belly. Keep your eyes open and gaze towards your upper thighs. See if you can ground your heels towards the floor. Lengthening here through the spine. Drawing in tight through the belly. Shoulders hug the arms. So you want to kind of roll the shoulders away to hug the arms. Wrap them around the armpits almost in a way. And then inhale, looking forward. Walk your feet about halfway up your mat. Stop there for a moment. Make sure your feet are about hip width apart. Lift up as you inhale, lengthening the spine. And then exhale, fold. Coming into our Uttanasana. So you can keep your hands on the floor, right in front of your feet. You can bring them by next to your feet, so your two hands are on either sides of your feet. You can go ahead and hold on to the opposite elbows. Let your head hang, maybe move again side to side, rocking your body. Keep drawing in through navel, let the head totally hang, no tension in the neck whatsoever. If the knees or if the hamstrings are tight, you can soften a little bit through the knees and still do this posture. Of course, the more you straighten your legs, the more you're gonna feel in the backs of your legs and your posterior chain of your body. Let the head totally hang. Let's hold here for three more breaths. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. 
exhale. Inhale. Last one, exhale. With the inhale, fingertips back to the floor, lift halfway, walk the hands forward from the mop downward facing. So as your heels stay down on the floor, walk your hands as far as they'll go and let your body sink through. So here you're feeling that deep stretch in the backs of your legs, but you're also getting to know and learn about your spine here as you press your chest through that opening in your arms. Draw in through navel, stay on your fingertips, try not to bring your palms flat to the floor. This will give you a little bit of extra height. And then looking forward, walking the feet to the top of your mat, bend your knees and slowly roll yourself up to standing. One vertebrae at a time. Start to stack your body on top of your feet. Your whole torso rises up. So now we're in our standing position. Palms forward, shoulders back, gaze is forward. Take a few breaths here. As the breath moves to the body, reconnect with that same feeling we were uh, trying to access when we were seated in Sukhasana. So you feel the stability of your feet this time instead of your sit bones. The weight of your body pressing down into the earth and the earth moving up and meeting you into your body. So that kind of that push and pull of the body against the earth and the earth against the body. Take a few more breaths. Let the arms relax, palms face forward, gaze forward. If you want, you can close your eyes. Otherwise, keep a gentle gaze. Surrender here to whatever is. With your spine nice and erect here, you, the, it's effortless to stand. The weight of the head gently balanced over the shoulders and the rib cage. The weight of the head, shoulders, and rib cage gently balanced over the hips. The weight of your head, shoulders, rib cage, and hips gently balanced over your legs. And then finally, all of it bounced over your feet. All the little bones in your feet, the little muscles that are working and allowing you to find stillness, balance, and posture here. Exhale, draw the palms together at the center of the heart. Inhale, arms coming up, gazing up towards thumb. You can find straightness in your spine here by looking up towards thumbs. Or if you wish, separate your arms and see if you can go into a little bit of a back bend. It's not a deep back bend. We're not trying to fold backwards or um, allow the back to completely fold. We're creating extension. So press the tailbone forward slightly as you open your heart, lift your chest. And then exhale, coming back to your center. Draw in your belly and come back to your Uttanasana. Soften the knees to get yourself down there. Once your hands are on the floor, other sides of your feet, let your head relax. Roll the weight forward to the balls of your feet. Inhale, lengthen through the spine. Exhale, let's step the right foot back. So the right leg comes back, huge, gigantic step. And I mean big, as big as you can get, like you want it to go all the way to the back of your mat. From there, see if you can bring your left knee forward slightly and plant your right knee on the floor, release your right toes. So you might need to adjust a little bit here. You can move your weight forward and back. When you're ready, inhale, come up. So we find our sense of balance here by pressing the hips forward and down. Your left knee stacked over your left ankle. Your arms can be down towards the floor. They can be on your hips. Or if you really feel like working today, they can be up and back. Again, opening in that same type of back bend. Chest forward, hips forward, shoulders back, and then gaze up. It's really up to you. If that's too much, you can just stay nice and straight. You don't have to um, do one or the other. It can just be wherever it's comfortable for you. So this is a good place to be as well. As long as your hips are moving forward and down, that's really all that matters. Let's hold one more breath wherever you are. And then exhale. If your arms are extended, we're going to go ahead and come forward. Hands to the floor. Straighten into that left leg. You're going to try to push your left hip back. So left hip back and then the right hip forward to square off your hips. So as you point down through your left toe, you can keep your fingertips on either sides of your left ankle. If the floor is too far away, blocks really come in handy here. However you feel you want to do this, make sure that those hips do indeed stay square. And if you have a little bit more give, 
maybe folding, bringing chin towards chin, and walking the hands forward past your left toes. Make sure that left leg stays straight, so don't try not to bend into that left knee. Contract into the quadricep, keep pointing down through the toe, nice lengthening to the back of the leg, even into the calf a little bit here, even though the toes are pointed. One breath here, exhale. Inhale, lift halfway, walk the fingertips back towards your body, hold there. Go ahead and bend into that left knee, right hand plants on the floor, and left arm comes up for a little bit of a twist. Look up towards left thumb, press strong right hand into the floor, keep that left knee tracking forward, not out to the side, it does like to move, so keep it nice and engaged, that left hip all the way forward, you're nice and pressing into that left knee, and then exhale, left hand comes down. One more time, see if you can stretch it out. Fingertips on the mat, belly in if you have a little bit more give. Fold forward, walking the fingertips forward, finding your stretch. Inhale, lengthen halfway. Exhale, bend the knee. This time, right hand to the floor, left hand on your thigh. You're gonna roll that hip out so you're on the, on the pinky toe side of your left foot. Roll that hip out and allow your right hip to move closer to the earth as you rotate back up. So it's similar to the first one, but we're gonna create a little hip opener here. Still warming up the body so you don't have to go too crazy into it just yet. Breathe. See what happens. Become aware of your spine. Find all of those little spots that we use in our meditation before we begin today. And then exhale, slowly come back to center. Tuck right toe under, straighten right leg. Stay here for a moment. Maybe your palms can come down to the floor or to the block. If not, you can use your fingertips too. See if you can press your hips forward and down. Find your stretch, find your whatever you feel good. And then we're going to lift this left foot by transferring weight to the hands. Protract the shoulders. Lift the left foot up. Hold there. Three. Working on that strong yang energy, two, and one. Exhale, press it back, downward facing dog. Hold here and breathe. Deep inhale, slow, gentle exhale. Pressing the hips up and back, strong fingers, knuckles into the floor. All right, we're gonna get to do the other side. So we're gonna look forward and we're gonna take that right leg all the way forward. So squeeze, squeeze, squeeze through your body and plant that right foot all the way between the hands. Because we're coming from the back instead of the front, you might need to adjust a little bit more, get yourself down there. And when you're ready, left knee comes down, release left toe. So starting with our kneeling lunge, take your time either to bring the hands to the knee, finding your nice tall spine here, or bringing hands to your waist. Again, pressing hips forward and down, opening through the heart. If you wish, if you wanna go a little deeper, you can extend the arms up and even arch back if that feels good in your practice. But remember, anywhere is fine. So you can always keep those hands down. You can still work into this practice. I know sometimes I can be a little bit extra when I teach. <laughs> Um, I love the idea of moving into the muscles, so I always want to give you options. If you're feeling a little bit like you want a little bit less, you can always do a little bit less. It's not about always doing the maximum. And then if your arms are extended up, we're going to exhale, bring them down towards the floor. So bring one hand to the outside and one hand to the inside of your right foot. And from there, straighten your legs. So take a moment to, again, adjust right hip back and left hip forward. Make those little tiny adjustments before you go eat deeper into the posture so that you are in the right alignment and there's no risk of injury. Once your right leg is straight, toes are pointing down towards the floor, right hip back, left hip forward. If you find you have some room to move, forward fold. Walk the fingertips forward and find your stretch. The instruction says chin to shin. But not all yogis can do the instructions perfectly. No matter how awesome or amazing you are, there's always going to be one or two postures that just don't cut it for your body today. 
So if your chin is not touching your shin, mine is definitely not, that doesn't mean you're not in the posture. You're still working towards it by elongating the spine and pressing that right hip back. And then exhale, walking the hands back in, lifting the spine halfway, bend into that right knee, plant the left hand on the floor, and we're gonna pivot, rotating right arm up, gazing up towards sky. Ooh, I had a nice little crack there in my back. That felt good. Reach up through fingertips. Keep that right knee nice and stacked, so don't let it open out to the side, not yet. Keep it down, right foot planted. Twist and rotate as you press the left hip down towards the earth. And exhale, right hand comes down. Straighten right leg again. Square off those hips, point to the toe. And then exhale, release. Find whatever length you can find here. Let the breath move effortless. Reconnect with the breath. That's usually, usually the best thing we can do is always just find reconnection with breath. And then slowly coming back to forward. Again, the left hand is continuing, is gonna again come to the floor. This time, right hand to your right thigh as you open up your right heel or foot. So you're on the pinky toe side of your foot. You're gonna rotate your torso, bringing left hip down, opening up and looking up towards sky. So be mindful of your left shoulder, try not to stink. Keep the left arm engaged, so you might need to readjust a little bit. Press that right knee away with your right arm, twist into your body, and exhale, coming back through to center. This time, go ahead and tuck left toe under, straighten left leg, and just take a moment here, finding your, your uh, kind of runner's lunge, I guess, pressing into that left toe. All right, so to transfer, the weight back into the hands. We're going to take that right foot up. Hold it there. Three, two, keep rotating through shoulders. And one, exhale, press it back. Downward facing dog, pedal it out. So starting to feel the heat that starts to move through the body as we work on using the breath to find a deeper version of each posture. And that doesn't mean deeper than the instruction, it means deeper than maybe what you were able to find yesterday, or the day before, or last week, or whenever. And then inhale, looking forward, we're gonna tiptoe our feet up to our hands. So keep your heels up, start to tiptoe, lifting up through the pelvis, lifting up through the hips, almost like you wanna go into a handstand. Push the floor away, keep the tiptoe, Keep the tiptoe, keep engaging into hands, you can do it. Walk the feet all the way between the hands, and exhale, release. If you want, you can bring your hands behind your calf muscles and really hug your body in towards your legs, rolling the weight forward to the balls of your feet, shoulders relax. Deep breath here. Slowly release the hands, lift halfway, creating space. Exhale, bend the knees and roll yourself up, coming back to standing. Once you're back in your standing position, relax arms down by your sides. Come back to Samas Titihi, our standing pose at the top of our mats. You can keep your eyes closed or gently focus your gaze forward. Just find one spot to gaze at. Noticing again how the distribution of weight Falls onto your feet, bringing some gratitude to the feet, to your mat, to the earth below your mat, the foundation of your house. All of these little things are part of our practice, becoming aware of all the different things that become us, that are interconnected with us. Exhale, drawing the palms together. Inhale, either coming up or arching back, opening heart to sky, grounding through heels, gazing up towards thumbs. Exhale, slowly forward fold, hinging from the hips as you come down, take your time, nice, easy, steady, hands to the floor, head relaxes. Inhale, lifting halfway, 
And then exhale, left foot steps back, great big step. Not as big as the first one, we took a little bit smaller. Pivot your left heel to the floor, bend into right knee a little bit so you can come up. We're gonna go into trikonasana. So straighten your right leg once you're up at the top. We're gonna turn and extend our arms, gaze over right fingertips. So really important here that your rib cage stays engaged and straight up. So as we reach, lengthen out of the rib cage, out of your hips. So everything's pulling, 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 pulling away. And then release. Right hand can come to shin, to ankle, to floor, to block. Or you can even pick up your big toe with your uh, index finger, your middle finger, and your thumb. Once you have completed that, then you can go ahead and extend left arm towards sky. Be very mindful with your right knee. So if you tend to hyperextend the knee, a little softness in that knee will help you find alignment there so your bones are supported. And then reach up, gaze up. We're gonna go for a little bind here. So taking left arm around, see if you can find your right thigh. Rotating through torso. If not, just to the lower back works just great. Pull up through your uh, right arm. And then exhale, release the bind, hands to the floor, pivot left leg back for a wide-legged pyramid. So it's a pyramid thing here, but it's not a traditional one. It's a nice wide-legged. I love these. I do these all the time. Inhale, lift up through the chest, lengthen spine. Exhale, see if you can release. And then go ahead and take a step forward with the left foot, shorten for a regular pyramid. So notice the difference here. You want to bring your left hip forward, right hip back. Lengthen through your spine, exhale, fold. Let your body surrender. We're gonna try a little balance here. I haven't taught this one in this class before, so we're gonna go nice and slow. So once you found your pyramid, walk your hands towards your left foot. So we're gonna try to balance right foot and hands. We're gonna try to bring this leg up. Aha, here we go. So as we look forward towards right knee or right toes, bend into the left knee, bring weight to the fingertips, Hold in through your belly, and then exhale, lift left leg up. Hold and breathe. Three, two, and one. Release. Hands to the floor, lengthen spine, back to pyramid. How'd you do? Walk the hands to the front, finding our wide-legged forward fold. Release, come down, let the head hang. Try to bring the crown of the head towards the earth. You can let the hands on, be on the floor, you can walk them forward, or you can bring them to your ankles or your calves, pulling your body through. Let the head feel no tension, so no tension in the neck whatsoever. Shoulders pull away. And then inhale, lift up halfway. Walk your hands towards the left, and we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So soften through left knee as you make your way up. Once you're up in position, straighten left leg. Rotate your right hip back just a little bit, kind of catty corner your hips. Arms extend in opposite directions. Make sure this right arm doesn't drop down. Keep it lifted. Reach to the right arm, gaze forward over left fingertips. Contract into both legs. Push right hip back and reach, reach, reach with that left arm. So you're really trying to extend. You're trying to reach as far as you go. You want to touch whatever is in front of you. And then exhale, pivot, bringing left hand down to the floor, to the shin, to the block wherever you can find it, and right arm up towards the sky. Gaze up towards right thumb as you rotate through torso. Bring your hips forward slightly and your chest back so that you are nice in between two panes of glass. You're kind of grounded there. Going for a twist, right arm comes behind. Maybe, just maybe, you can find that left thigh. Even if you can't, you can just bring right hand to your lower back. Just bring it to your sacrum there, no big deal. Keep the shoulders moving back, gaze up. And then exhale, let's release. Right hand comes down, left hand releases. And coming into our wide-legged pyramid. So in this wide-legged pyramid, you still wanna rotate right hip forward, left hip back. Inhale, lengthen through spine. And then again, exhale, surrender down. Reaching chin towards shin. Extending through to the body. Find your deepest stretch. Inhale, lengthen through spine and go ahead and step that right foot forward just a little bit to shorten your pyramid stance. For our balance, we need to have our pyramid in its traditional length. So right hip forward, left hip back, chin towards shin, find your stretch. 
And then for the balance, we're gonna walk those fingertips back towards right toes. Remember, you wanna keep that left leg engaged so you can traction into the hamstring and into the quadricep. Go ahead and bend into right knee so your right toes can stay on the floor as you prepare. When you're ready, round your spine, draw in through belly, and lift up through right toe. Three, two, and one. Release. Good job. Back through to center. Walk your hands into the center of your mat. Separate your feet a little bit wider. See if you can bring your forehead to the floor. You can either extend your arms forward, or you can let them be on the mat or gouge by your sides. See if you can rest the anatomical part of the top of your head on the floor. There's a wideness in the legs. The toes are pointing in slightly. The chest moves through the uh, legs, breathing easy. And then inhale, release the hands, lift halfway. Walk the fingertips back forward. We're gonna take that right foot back and bring the knees down to the floor. Sit back for Balasana. So go ahead and sit all the way down for Balasana. So we'll find out. So we're Balasana. <laughs> Forehead to the floor. You can let your arms relax down by your sides. Let the breath continue to move effortlessly through the body and feel the femurs as they pull into the hip joints and as you surrender down into your posture. Let your forehead completely rest so there's no tension there. We're gonna do a couple more yang postures before we move into our yin practice. So the first one we're gonna attempt here is our dolphin pose. So I'll give you a couple of options. If you know you have a really strong dolphin and you're able to do it, great. Then I want you to start with your elbows close to your knees. So the closer your elbows are to your knees, the harder your dolphin will feel. If you haven't done dolphin in a while, you're not quite sure, then take those elbows a little further away from your knees. So you can come up a little bit and take those elbows away. So start wherever you feel comfortable. Once your elbows are in position, you can hold on to the outsides of your elbows because this measures out where your shoulders stack right over your elbows. Then you can release your hands to the floor, either palms down so that you're kind of grabbing the floor with your forearms, or you can interlace your fingers, make a little tripod with your arms. Either way is fine, you get to choose. From here, the elbows no longer move, they are glued to the floor. Tuck the toes under and press up through the hips, find your dolphin pose. So notice the first thing I do when I come into dolphin is I shake out my head because it just feels like the tension in the neck is almost automatic. So as soon as I shake out my neck, it gives my body a, a signal, okay, okay, Fante, relax your neck, relax into it, press into your forearms, engage into the shoulders, draw in through belly, and lengthen the elbow out. So all these cues come to me as soon as I shake out my head. You can try that for yourself, see if that's the case for you. Let's hold here for a few breaths, really pressing into the forearms, engaging into those shoulders, strengthening into the shoulders and arms. One more breath, inhale. And exhale, knees come down, relax the hips back, arms down by your feet, balasana, let it go. Just let the breath move. These strong asanas, these practice of moving into these strong asanas, really important for not just building strength, but putting the kind of pressure that we need on the bones in order to keep them healthy. So you need that kind of weight bearing on your bones to keep your bones healthy. So we'll do it one more time. <laughs> if you know that that was really hard and your elbows were close to your knees, just bring them a little further away. I promise you it'll be easier. So then again, set up into your arms, separate your hands about, you know, uh, parallel to each other or interlacing, finding your tripod. Tuck the toes under and lift up. 
me automatically. This is a lot easier for me. My hand started a little further away. And now I'm able to hold the posture with a little bit more ease and a little bit more surrender that it's okay to not always struggle and do the absolute most you can do. It's okay to just find the posture and enjoy it. Sometimes that's what it's about. Let's hold here, your gaze is towards your thighs. Keep pressing your chest through, engaging strongly into the shoulders. Hold for three. Let the head relax, even though you're here, let the head soften, two. The heels press down towards the earth, but they may not touch. And one, exhale, knees come down. Last time, balasana, forehead to the floor. Surrender there. Deep inhale, slow exhale. And slowly roll up. All right, so we are gonna do headstand prep. If you've never done headstand or if you have done headstand but it's been a while, then I want you to really move slowly into this. Headstand is really about shoulders. It has very little to do with head, <laughs> even though the top of your head is touching the floor. You're actually not really balancing on your head, you're using your shoulders. So that same feeling you felt in dolphin, you should feel that same idea, that same type of feeling in your headstand. So we're gonna try it. This is the prep and I'll tell you when you can stop and stay there or when you can move into a little bit more. So bringing the elbows back to the floor, this time you don't have to worry about how close they are to your knees or not. Um, create that tripod, so measure out your elbows, Create that tripod stance with your hands and then open your hands like a little basket. This beautiful little basket is going to receive the back of your head. So my, where my hair bun is. So that's going to come back into there. You can walk your knees a little closer if they're too far away. Now from here, already you're starting to realize how much pressure you need to put in your forearms, how much engagement you need to have in your core and in your shoulders in order to make the legs come up. So this is our prep here by tucking the toes under. You lift the hips, just like we do in dolphin, and you start to walk the feet in. So if you're feeling like you're dumping all of your weight onto your head and neck, then press the floor away, almost like you want your top of your head to float away from the floor. When you're ready, you can try bringing one toe up, see how that feels, and rolling your hips over your shoulders, and then bringing, maybe bringing that toe down, readjusting back to the setup. And then try the other toe, left toe up, Roll the way back towards the shoulders and come down. Good. So let's hold here for a few more breaths and then we're going to take a break and try it again. Belly strong in, engagement in the arms. Exhale, walk the feet away, bring the knees down and keep the head down as you come back to your balasana. This time, arms extended, forehead to the floor. So you want to make sure that the breath is steady throughout your movement into headstand, into Shirsasana, and also afterwards once you're resting. I wish I was in person so I could answer you guys' questions on it, but we're here. Let's do it. So let's come forward, measure out those elbows, interlace your hands, there's your little basket, Place top of your head on the floor, back of your head in your little basket. Might need to walk your knees in a little bit to really engage into shoulders. Tuck toes under, go into your prep. So the prep already tells you how much weight you're putting on your head and how much weight you're putting on your arms. When you're ready, keep walking the feet in. Try to get the hips over the shoulders. As you're ready, maybe bring one toe up and maybe the other. Stay here, kind of curled into your body. Feel the weight into your shoulders, into your forearms. It feels a lot like dolphin, just a little bit different. If you're scared, you can go by a wall. If you're scared, you're gonna fall backwards. And then exhale, lower the feet, walk them away. Knees come down, hips back, forehead to the floor, arms extended, relax and breathe. Any kind of inversion, headstand in particular, helps us to, for the nervous system to release and relax. So it's a really good practice to do daily. You don't have to stay in headstand for five, 10 minutes. You can stay for 10, 15 seconds and that works. 
And the way we did it today with the knees tucked in, it really helps to build the core strength you need into your body in order to find the full extension. So a uh, headstand doesn't have to be legs up. It can stay con uh, compressed and contracted like we did today. All right, good job. <laughs> Let's go ahead and open up the knees. Keep the big toes touching. Allow those hips to sit back and down and then lift the elbows to the floor. Lengthen through the body. If you want to use a prop here, because we're going to hold this one a little bit longer now that we're moving into our in practice, you can place it between your knees and then settle down so that the bolster or the block can support your chest, forehead or chin to the floor. And let's breathe here. You can turn your head to the side if you want, or the other side, or just keep your chin down. Whatever feels good. This is your chance to surrender, to relax, to let go. A few more breaths. Feel the weight on your body onto your block or bolster. And then slowly slide your hands underneath your shoulders. Ground yourself to come up. Good. You can move the bolster away. We're going to continue on to stretch out the shoulders. So coming to seated, you're going to take one leg so that your left knee is forward. Oh, look, see if I go in the leg, I'm not so dark. With the left knee forward, you can take that other leg either across and plant it on the floor. So this is a good place to be. You can also, since we're going to be here for a little bit, I'll give you the option, lift into the left hip by sliding kind of a rolled up mat onto that hip. And that might give you enough room to tuck that toe behind. So you can kind of adjust there. So we're going into our cow face pose. You want to make sure that you're not actually seated on your uh, left heel. Left, yes. So find your balance there. If you don't need the uh, blanket or if it's uncomfortable for you in any way, just come down to the floor. This is how the posture is meant to be anyway, so you can just find it there. So the right knee is on top. You're feeling that nice stretch through the hips. Let's just hold here, holding on to the feet. And let's breathe through it. This, these are usually really tough for me, you guys. I had um, a knee injury a while back and it allowed my, uh, it created uh, problems in my left hip. My injury was on my right knee but the problems caused afterwards were on my left hip. So these types of poses are good for me, but they're hard, they're difficult, and they're not the most comfortable. But we know, we practice, we do what we can. Ideally, we do want the two knees stacked, one on top of the other. So if that's where you are, then great. I'll get there, I'll join you one day. Take a few breaths. Surrender into the discomfort if you're feeling any. If this is a posture that your body likes, then just enjoy. And we're gonna add some arms here. So inhale, draw the arms up. We're gonna take the uh, left elbow up towards the sky. You can hold on to the left elbow with your right hand and pull it back up towards the sky. Or take that right arm around and see if you can reach and find your fingertips. Alternately, if you can't find your fingertips, you can use the strap. So you can use the strap to hold onto the strap behind your back. Say if you can realign your spine, lifting up the chest, rolling down through the right shoulder, and then hold here for five. Four. And one, releasing the arms, letting them out to the side. Release or lean your body to the left. Release the right leg. Let's stack the knees, or not stack the knees, but bring 
the right knee back so that you're in that kind of lightning bolt shape. Oh, we're gonna reach for our bolster for our twist before we do the other side. So go ahead and bring your bolster to the left side hip. Straddle that, that on both sides and we're gonna come down and we're gonna hold a nice long twist. I did this in the yin class I taught um, or I subbed the other day. One of my favorite ways to twist, it's so supportive. It's such a beautiful yin posture. We're gonna hold here for quite a bit, so get yourself comfortable. The elbows are soft and you can use the elbows to keep you balanced, but try not to let any weight be bared onto the elbows. So no, no weight onto the arms. Just the weight is on your rib cage, onto your cushion. And the breath is always moving steady, rhythmic, relaxed, so no tension. Oh my gosh, sorry you guys. Make sure my phone is on mute so that doesn't happen again. Sorry, I'm sure that was really loud. Rest there for a few more breaths. If you start to feel like the majority of your weight is on your left side, see if you can draw a little bit more weight to your right side, maybe even gaze to the left. Slowly exhaling, bringing the head back to center, sliding the hands underneath the shoulders, slowly lift up, bringing your weight back to center. Before we do the other side, just take both hands to the right leg. So right hand to uh, right foot, left hand to right knee, and just a little rotation, counter rotation to the right. And then exhale, coming back. Okay, good job. All right, so we're gonna continue with the other side. So now bringing your right foot underneath that left hip. Remember, you don't wanna be sitting on the foot. So slide it out slightly so your right knee's pointing straight forward. And then you can take that left leg on top. Or remember right before, if you wanted to put something underneath your hips, that might help you slide. Since this is my injured hip, I'm gonna keep the um, blanket underneath my hip. If you don't need it, you don't have to use it. You wanna try to stack the knees the best you can, hold on to the, uh, to the feet, and let's just hold here for a few breaths. Imagine lengthening up through your rib cage. So just pulling up your rib cage and centering your body in the middle. With your legs asymmetrically like this, it's very easy to lean one way or lean the other. So finding that center of gravity, and feeling that rooted sensation through your sit bones and through your pelvic floor, that's gonna mean a lot for your posture. So that's what we're working on here. If you do feel a lot of tightness into your hip, 
just be mindful of it as long as there's no sharp shooting pain then it's just part of your practice so just, <clears throat> just be patient excuse me let the breath move effortlessly <coughs> Sometimes as we hold, there's like a little bit of a give that happens and it's like, ah, okay, I can hold. Let's do just a few more breaths here before we add the arms. And then exhale, re reaching both arms up towards sky, bending into right elbow. You can keep that left hand at the elbow and help guide it back behind you. So this could be your pose, just stretching through that elbow. But if you want, you can take that left arm around, reach back, maybe connect through fingertips. If you have the fingertips, great. If not, use the strap or hold on to your shirt. If you're wearing a shirt, you can hold on to the shirt with your right hand and left hand. Either way, you're trying to walk up the strap, trying to bring those uh, um, fingers together, reach up through chest and rib cage, roll that right shoulder back, reach the right elbow high and lift your chin. So you don't wanna be tucked in here everything expanding, everything long. You can close your eyes or you can gaze down towards the mat or towards your left knee. Breathing easy. Again, no sharp shooting pain. Any pain means you've gone too far. Honor your body. Remember we started with feeling gratitude. So what do we do when we're grateful, right? We don't hurt ourselves. So anytime there's any kind of sharp pain, you wanna come out and you wanna reassess the posture, modify if you need to. A few more breaths here, if you can hold. Try to relax into the muscles of the hip, let them do their thing. Relax into the muscles of the shoulder and the tricep. And then exhale, let's slowly release, bring the hands down. We're gonna take that left leg, slide it all the way around. Maybe it feels kind of funky, it's kind of strange. Just let it come down. I'm gonna come off my blanket here. Hip comes down, right foot is on top of the left knee, left leg is behind you. You're gonna use your Prop on this side. Since I don't, I'm running out of mat, I'm gonna use my blanket, which happens to be in the perfect place. Go ahead and rotate your torso. So straddle your, your, um, your bolster with your arms and rotate that left hip forward and the right rib cage out as you rest onto your um, bolster. Let the forehead come to the floor. From here, you can let the elbows come down. And now we rest. Allow the weight of your body to fully fall onto your bolster. Try not to use your arms to support any part of your weight. So just hanging out there, relax.
And if you like, you can turn your head to the right, giving a little stretch into the neck. And slowly with your next exhale, bring your head back through center if you turned it. Hands underneath the shoulders, gently press your body up. Take your time to bring your chest back, lining up through center. Right hand to left knee, left hand to left foot. Rotate your torso just for a little counter twist here, looking over left shoulder. You can lean in a little bit. It's because of the hip, you might not have that much movement there. So you decide if you want to just lean in or if you just want to twist. And then exhale, coming back through to center. Great job. All right, so the last few poses are awesome. One of my absolute favorites. I should turn this way. You're going to take your bolster, place it underneath your knees. The first one we're going to do is Navasana. We did this again. I <laughs> did for David. David gets two Navasanas in a row. You're going to use the, the bolster or your prop to hold on to as you lean back and then lift the legs. So by holding on to your bolster or prop, you're able to find a little bit of um, uh, leverage here so you can stay lifted. But you're using still your core muscles. If you want to make it a little harder, release your hands and just place them fingertips on other sides of your body. Keep drawing the knees into the body, lift the chest, shoulders back. Or lastly, if you want, you can either hold on to your legs. This makes the posture a little bit easier or hold on to the tops of your knees, but try to keep your feet parallel to the floor. So wherever you are, whatever version of this you are, just find length, body here, hold on to whatever you can hold on to. And then exhale, slowly lower down. Hug your knees into your body, round your spine, press your lower back, push it away from you, forehead to your knees. And then slowly lift up, make sure you have enough room behind you, kind of scoot your whole bolster forward and lay all the way back. Bolster is still underneath your knees here. We're gonna do the first bridge pose without um, any help. So bring the feet parallel to each other, Knees are parallel to each other, so imagine two train tracks, right? Nice and um, uh, side by side, like two sides of the letter H. Arms down by your sides, palms facing down. Take a deep inhale breath, and as you exhale, lift the hips up. So we want to wriggle the shoulders under, maybe reach for your ankles. If you have your ankles, don't let your hips sink down. If you have your ankles, lift your hips up. But if that's too hard and you lose your ankles, you can just bring your hands to the floor. No big deal. Hips up, gaze towards your belly, gaze towards your chest, so tucking the chin in, lengthening back of neck. Hold here and breathe for five. Shoulders press into the floor, four, three, two. We're gonna add the little dynamic movement here. Exhale, draw the arms up and lower the hips down. Bolster still in place there. We're going to use it in a moment. Inhale, arms down by your sides, hips up. Let's do five more. Exhale, arms up, hips down. Inhale, arms down, hips up. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. 
last one. Inhale. Hold here with your hips up. You're going to reach down, grab your bolster, slide it underneath your sacrum, and let your tailbone come down to it. So good job. It was right in the right spot. That's where we needed it. So now go ahead and soften into the shoulders. We're going to do legs up the wall. If you have an actual wall that you can go to, use your wall, but also use your prop. If you don't have a wall, you can still do this without the need of a wall. So you can just let your legs come up. Maybe gaze towards your toes. A little softness in the knees, so kind of relax the legs a little bit. Don't mean it's not like, oh, the legs straight. Just keep the legs soft. Arms are down by your sides, palms facing up. The back of the neck is long, so you want to feel that Cervical spine lengthening here from the ears all the way down into the collarbones. And again, if you want, you can close your eyes. Rest here for a few breaths. This posture is really, really, really good for our legs. The circulatory system of the legs. We're always standing or sitting with our feet down. It's just a good idea to elevate them. If you know anyone or if you yourself have any kind of issues with varicose veins or spider veins, anything like that, this is so good to relieve your legs from those types of ailments. So we hold here and we maintain breath and we surrender. Again, drawing into that grateful heart. At some point, your feet will start to feel a little tingly. Your knees will want to kind of bend a little bit more. Let them. Let the feet feel tingly. Let the knees soften. Make sure you're completely supported in your sacrum by your block or by your cushion. With the next exhale, we're going to start to slowly bend the knees. They might already be having a little bit of a bend in them. Bend them a little bit more so that you can bring your feet down towards your tush. And once your feet come down, you start to feel that tingling sensation in your feet. Go ahead and hug the knees into the chest with your hips elevated. This is going to put a little bit more weight into your shoulders. So if it's too much, feel free to remove the bolster or the cushion. Let's see if you can pull the knees in, really round your spine, maybe even bring the forehead to me. And then exhale, lower the feet down. Lift the hips just enough to remove the prop from underneath you. And lay back down, let's come into our Shavasana. So legs extended. Arms wide away from the body, as wide, as far away or as close as you feel comfortable. Let the feet flop out to the side, so there's a little bit of an outward rotation in the hips. The thighs are soft, there's no tension in the legs whatsoever. 
the shoulders. There's again that outward rotation in the shoulders, opening through the collarbone, expanding the space between shoulder and shoulder. Sometimes we tend to kind of create an arch in the back when we, when we try to come into Shavasana. So what I want you to try to do is pull in through your belly and flatten your back against the floor. So once your back is flattened against the floor, then let the natural arch of the spine come in. So you don't want to feel like you're arching, but you also don't want to feel like you're concaving at all. Just natural stance. Eyes are closed, breath is steady and rhythmic. Drawing back to that sense of gratitude. go of anything that doesn't serve us. Letting go of old paradigms of fear and mistrust. Moving into a space of love, understanding. Slowly with the next exhale breath, we'll begin to add a little bit of movement to the body. Maybe swaying the head side to side, moving the fingers, the toes, the hands, the feet, the wrists, the ankles, bending the knees, bending the elbows, letting the hands rest on your belly, or maybe one hand on your belly, one hand on your heart, and the knees falling in towards each other. Rest here for a few breaths. And then exhale, bring the knees into the chest once more, this time without the bolster underneath your hips. Really round your spine, forehead towards knee. You can hug your arms around your legs, holding onto your opposite elbow. And then exhale, release the head back to the floor, roll over to your right side. Take your right arm underneath like a pillow, left hand is in front. Linger there for a breath or two as you're ready. You will make your way up to a comfortable seated position, back to our Sukhasana. Cross your feet. Bring the weight onto the sit bones, realign the spine. You can bring your hands to your knees as you lengthen through shoulders and spine here through top of head. Keep your eyes closed, your awareness focused inward. Exhaling, drawing the palms towards each other at the center of the heart, symbolizing that union of body, mind, and spirit. In our yang practice, we focus on strength. We focus on the giving life force of the, of the sun, our masculine energy that is present in all of us, regardless of gender. And then during our yin practice, we focus on the moon side, the soft moon side that allows the tides to move and sway. It is a gentle and kind of nurturing energy. It is slow and passive as opposed to strong and um, yeah, at times forceful, like the sun stings your skin and the moon just softly shines, reflecting the light of the sun.
And then finally, we'll release the next breath away, letting with it go anything that no longer serves us, any limiting thoughts, beliefs, any negative talk. Let's see if you can exhale it out with the next breath. And as we inhale, we draw the breath in, preparing for Om. Um. Namaste.